This week in Drone News, we have four stories for you. A lot of new stuff. We have a new drone announcement from Brink. We have a Tennessee law that could ban non-NDA drones from government use. We have a new FAA CBO and then also potentially a new DJI drone. So let's get to it. All right, your first story this week is a soon to be released new drone from Brink. Uh, Brink released an image as a teaser uh, with the date 3-2-2023, suggesting that we'll hear a little bit better and get a better look at uh, the new public safety drone at the beginning of March. Uh, there's not a whole lot of information available at the moment. Uh, there is an image of the drone. Uh, you can see a variety of different lights. You can see a camera and then a bunch of sensors. Uh, I think they're taking a page from the, uh, the DJI book here and uh, trying to get some hype uh, going on about this. Uh, Brink is known for its lemur and then the lemur S, which are FPV platforms that are designed specifically for law enforcement. So uh, tell us what you think this is going to be and what you would like to see potentially uh, from a, a law enforcement drone if this is what you're using. Your second story this week is a bit of a frustrating one with a Tennessee bill that would ban state and local agencies and law enforcement uh, from purchasing or using drones and telecommunication equipment uh, that is banned under the what's called the National Defense Author Authorization Act, or NDAA, you may have heard that term. Uh, the bill would essentially ban DJI and Autel Robotics aircraft for use in any public safety setting or even services that are provided to public safety. Uh, now, we saw a similar bill in Florida. Uh, this would unfortunately result in many departments that are losing uh, capabilities, and then they would also be paying far more for uh, products that are not doing the job properly for them. Uh, overall, this would actually hurt public responders uh, in including some of our students. So we're not a big fan of this. Now, I, I do want to do a bit of a side note here. I, I usually don't try to mention anything uh, with a personal opinion uh, on, uh, on these news updates that I do, but uh, we've seen this bill in the past in Florida. Uh, it's had some pretty drastic effects, and we've heard that from our students directly. Uh, this is not something that we're making up. Now, to be clear, uh, uh, there is definitely a need for us to push for American-based uh, drones. And I've said this in the past. I've been uh, somewhat vocal about this. Uh, but the problem is that in the meantime, uh, we are hurting the people that are using drones every day, and, uh, and, and most of the time to save lives. And this could be their lives, uh, because you have firefighters that are using drones to uh, make sure they don't send other firefighters in the middle of a, of a fire. Uh, you have uh, police officers every day that are using drones to save their own lives, but also to search for kids that are missing uh, somewhere, uh, forcing them to use equipment that is uh, to, that is more expensive and that is less capable is not the solution. Uh, we need to get a, a replacement. Uh, sure, let's make it an American-made drone that is high quality and that is available, but we can't downgrade our uh, public safety users and, uh, and tell them to use something inferior that is a lot more expensive. Uh, a lot of these places have budgets that they have to st stick with. Uh, they've spent the money already and they might be ending up with a, a brick that they can't fly. So uh, I, I did want to make a side note and, and I know a lot of our students would be affected by this and I'm not just not a big fan. All right, your third story this week is a new CBO for recreational flyers. STEM Plus C is a robotics and aviation STEM program that's designed to get kids and teachers interested in aviation. Uh, they were approved by the FA this week as the fourth community-based organization, or CBO. Uh, we're actually happy to share that. Uh, the uh, STEM Plus C, we've worked with them in the past. Uh, they actually uh, help us also with trust. They, uh, they recommend that uh, you use our trust program. Uh, we work with them. They're located here in the same area that we are. Uh, they do a lot of great work with uh, teachers and also kids, getting them interested in aviation, which is uh, one of uh, one of the things that I'm, I'm really interested in in, in the position that I currently hold. So um, we're also happy to share that the STEM C guidelines appear to be both, uh, to follow both the FTCA and the FPV Freedom Coalition guidelines. Uh, they're uh, pretty easy to find on their website, uh, at least compared to uh, what we saw from the AMA. Now, the, the, the guidelines are pretty long, 16 pages, but uh, seven of these pages at the end uh, appear to be definition. So uh, make sure that you read yourself uh, the, the guidelines, make sure that they work for you. But uh, if you're working with uh, STEM STEM programs, I think between the uh, FTCA, the Flight Test Community Association, and then STEM Plus, uh, you will be getting uh, some really good information in this case. So make sure that you find if this is the right uh, CBO for you. And your last story this week is a new DJI drone on the horizon. Uh, we've seen pictures of a Mini SE surface this week online. Uh, the actual specs are not uh, available yet, but it is rumored to have uh, to be able to record at 2.7K uh, as far as videos uh, using a 12 megapixel 
megapixel sensor, uh, 31 minutes of flight time, and then uh, a price tag of about $299. Uh, we've talked about this in the office. We're trying to figure out the difference between this and the actual Mini 2. Uh, it doesn't seem to be a whole lot of difference, but uh, DJI has a history of creating uh, cheaper offerings for older drones. Uh, we saw that with the Mini SE that came out uh, around the same time the Mini 2 was being released. So uh, they used the old, uh, I call it chassis, they used the old frame uh, that they had from the Mini. Uh, they changed the software a little bit to limit the capability of the sensor, uh, even though it was pretty much the same exact sensor. And then uh, and then they sell it for cheaper, which I think is smart and it, it gets a cheaper drone in the hands of people that uh, ne don't necessarily want to spend uh, that much money on a, on a larger drone. So uh, Mini 2 AC, we'll let you know when we uh, find out more, but uh, let us know what you think uh, in the comments. And then to finish, I, I did want to mention one more thing. Uh, our industry friends, Adrian Doko and Jared Janasek, uh, are putting a, a, an in-person workshop a drone in-person workshop in Houston, Texas. Uh, that's going to be on February 18 and 19. Uh, you'll learn from a lot of industry experts uh, in photography, mapping, oil and gas. They actually have uh, quite the lineup. Uh, you'll see there is an in-person component on the Sunday. On Saturday, you're going to be sitting in the classroom and learning. Uh, if you've watched our channel, if you've taken some of our courses, uh, some of the instructors there will look very familiar uh, because uh, we've worked with them in the past. So uh, I'm happy to, uh, to be sponsoring the event with Pilot Institute. You can actually get 25% off the tickets uh, by using coupon code PI25 uh, during checkout, and that's going to save you a little bit of money there. So uh, that's it. That's, uh, that's all we have. Uh, as always, like, subscribe, and uh, we'll see you next week. What is that stuff? Can I keep going? Yeah, you're good now.